This is Iowa's News Now Sports with Owen Sebring. Having the worst offense in FBS football this season, some fans were hoping to see some offseason changes in the Iowa coaching staff, especially maybe some movement around Brian Ferentz and the offensive coordinator. But that will not be the case for 2023. Today, both Kirk Ferentz and Athletic Director Gary Barta spoke about their confidence in Brian moving forward. Uh, as I stand here today, you know, I anticipate no changes in our staff moving forward. Uh, that's my plan, certainly. Uh, I think we do have a terrific staff, and I thought they did a great job last year in tough circumstances and uh, you know, navigated us through, I think, some big challenges. The bottom line is, you know, all offense is about moving the ball consistently, scoring enough points to win. And uh, you know, I think the numbers bear out that it wasn't good enough. And the other part about that is we're, we're well aware of that. We've been well aware of that. And we own it. Nobody's running from that by any stretch of the uh, imagination. And uh, the whole idea right now is to move forward and fix it. To indicate that Brian's uh, not qualified simply is, uh, you know, that, that's a bad narrative. I would indicate he's, he's uniquely qualified. He grew up here around this program. He played offense in this offense. And over the past 10 years, arguably one of our, our, our best decades in Hawkeye football, he's been an integral part of that staff. Now, I a bit of a trip down memory lane for some context. We've got uh, the Hawkeyes ranked 130th out of 131 teams in yards per game this season. And they were bottom 10 in rushing yards, passing yards, and points per game. It's gotten very crowded at the top of the MVC men's standings this year. Entering tonight, the top eight spots in the league were separated by only two games. And both you and I and Drake are right in the thick of that hunt for this year's title. First meeting of the season between the Iowa rivals. They'll play again in two weeks at the McLeod Center. As the season has progressed along, He's been really big for you and I is Trey Campbell. This kid's a true freshman out of Cedar Falls, and he's really starting to shine for his hometown squad. And then conversely, you've got redshirt sophomore Bowen Bourne, a native of Norwalk, putting a hurting on his hometown team. He had two big three-pointers tonight, one to send the game to OT, one to send it to double OT. Right now, you and I trails by five in that second overtime. Game not over quite yet, though. Second meeting in the season between you and I and Drake on the women's floor. You and I won at the buzzer in Des Moines less than a month ago, and we've got another close one tonight. You and I is down five with less than four minutes left. Kaylin Morgan gets the ball at the top of the key. Blown assignment by the Drake defense. She goes smoothly to the rim for the layup to cut the lead to three. Now under two minutes left, Panthers within two. Just look at Emerson Green having her way down in the paint. Bullies her way for the equalizer. The game is tied with under three seconds left. Let's flash back to last month when these teams played in Des Moines. Maya McDermott, she hit a floater from the right side of the lane with under a second left in the game to give you and I the win. So who are you giving the ball to tonight? As the clock winds down, it's McDermott. A floater from the right side of the lane. Bottoms to bottom the Bulldogs, a Drake killer. McDermott's a native of Johnston. This is basically her hometown team, but she sends them packing for the second time in three weeks. I wasn't shooting my best. I didn't play my best, but I mean, the play happened how it happened. They, they doubled M, I think, and I just had to get open and maybe just launch up that shot. I practiced those. She knows I practiced those in and, and warm ups and then at halftime. And I mean, just, just got lucky and went in again. So. She wants the ball in her hands in that moment, and more often than not, she's going to make the right play. But uh, what, what you saw tonight is, is my attempt. It's what she does. She, she makes big play after big play, and she wants that moment. She loves that stage. I could not even fathom that. Two buzzer beaters against your in-state rival less than three weeks apart. Maya McDermott carving out a name for herself in Panther lore. You and I have now won six of its last seven games overall and six in second place in the conference. It's going to be for Sports Tonight. We're going to be right back with a final look at your weather.